My name is Gladys Kumpuyo. I have worked for Computile for the longest time, I think, <laughs> since 2005. And today, I am the director of the Africa programs, which is, uh, I think, the largest of the programs. And uh, the only unfortunate thing today is that I couldn't take all of you to Africa to celebrate this. <laughs> because the people who are actually celebrating are the people who have benefited from the 200,000 pieces that have uh, reached them. So I'll attempt to celebrate with you what we have done in a short presentation showing how we've helped to enhance access to information technology in Africa. Really, this is the same thing that has happened in other countries. But on my left, you can see the numbers that have gone to Chile, so I think they speak for themselves. My presentation is really brief. It's a small insight to what we have done with the efforts you have supported us with. If I could bring a real picture of the child, of the teacher, of the doctor, of the farmer, when they first receive the equipment and get trained. That is what keeps me going across Africa on rough roads <laughs> and rough terrains to tell them you need more than food. You actually need technology so that you can learn for yourself how to do these things. And I'm learning a new technology here. So we have with the team of people I work with on the ground and the team that is based here in the UK, tried to enhance access in quite a number of different ways. I'll just mention four of them. The first is hardware. It is until you have your mobile phone that you can see the value of driving back to the house when you forget. Because you have a tool that you really do need. And how accessible is this hardware? How affordable is it? We try as much as possible to have very few members of staff on board so that we can afford to have it at the lowest price possible. I like the point about sustainability so that people can actually own it by paying um, a subsidized fee. We can't afford to reach everybody. So in Computide Africa, we try and establish local distribution partners who can do the last mile, who can train, who can maintain, who can actually do the support that Computer International cannot do. And in this, we create partnerships. Other than the hardware, we do know there is a lot of software going around in the world. We don't duplicate that, we make it affordable. But for those that are not there, we try to partner with both UK and US partners to develop free and open source solutions because over and above the cost of the hardware, the software is expensive. I don't know if you know this, but sometimes it costs more than twice the hardware just to have the software that you require to actually run it. My, big, my biggest job is actually to create awareness. Locally, in the countries where we work, regionally so that organizations can collaborate and internationally so that we can see what solutions already exist in areas of e-health, e-learning, e-inclusion in terms of social inclusion for the disadvantaged and finally in the legislation and support of electronic waste. Our vision being that we can get both the rich and the poor to have equal access to information and communication technology. Not just making them have access, but making sure that we can provide practical solutions to reduce poverty, but I like using the word create wealth, because when we create wealth, then poverty is, re is reduced. We have not exhausted the tools. So we are also enhancing technology by making sure that we can invest in research and development for the future. I don't know whether we'll be distributing computers 10 years from now. Maybe there'll be handheld devices, I don't know. But it is until we have worked together to bring research and development for people who need to access it. Where are we in Africa? Beautiful map, isn't it? I need more blue dots there, so 
<laughs> you can go back and give us more. And where we have established partners, we have the red dots. And these are channels that actually work on behalf of Computer to support it. With one tiny regional office in Nairobi, Kenya, and we fly back and forth. Soon I'll be asking for a donation of a plane. Anyone willing to do that? <laughs> because the cost of flight between the two the countries are really something. So we have continued to provide professionally refurbished personal computers to over 36 African countries. Recently, everybody wants a laptop. They don't want to get away with their old computer, but they also want a laptop. And they want a laptop to use like a PC. So I, we need to define another way of what people need laptops for. But yes, that's where we are. Physical connectivity is unheard of in many African countries, but the mobile phone has gone places. So we also give wireless equipment, which means where there is no telecommunication, wireless equipment can work. I'll be hearing from our great partner, March Works, and what they've been able to do with their wireless equipment from computering and networking solutions. In the end, each and every organization needs to connect. And these are some of the solutions we've been able to give. We have talked about partners. Because I cannot afford to get a call from a school in rural Zambia about their PC, we need the local people to have enough technical support and skills to maintain them. So in every shipment, other than the computers you donate to us, we donate cartons of spare parts so that the skills on the ground can actually use this to repair and maintain. And I'm glad that he's a lady, so you know we have ladies also doing technical maintenance on the ground. The disadvantaged in the world are many, but I think the blind and the visually impaired are more disadvantaged than anyone else. And if we were to leave them out in the development cycle, then it means we are disadvantaging them more beyond this. So Computer Aid has worked in collaboration with Kenya Union of the Blind and other unions of the blind to help them not just access the equipment that we have, but also the software for screen output and magnifying so that they can be independent in themselves. The gentleman on the left hand side was a university student and he had to pay somebody to be transcribing for him. With this computer he has right now, he has one of the best jobs in the second city of Kenya, Mombasa. And he told me, I hope Gladys, you tell people they shouldn't stop here because we need more people who have equal access to this technology. I'd like to, to have spent a little bit more of time to tell you about how food security and weather has an impact on this. But I'll spare you because we have which is Tom from World Fair to tell us about this. But basically, the first time I went into a warehouse of the weather, st of a weather radio station and found booklets and booklets of their regional data, and I was expecting to hear the weather forecast the next day, I was quite shocked. Where do we actually begin from there? So food security may not even just begin by food. It actually begins by automating that information that you have. Let's talk about e-learning. E-learning in most, let me say, African universities and colleges is a myth. Not only because technology is not affordable, but it's also not available. And I'm glad to say that with the solutions you've put on our hands, with the computers you've put on our hands, and the partnerships, we are able to lobby international partners to help us do this e-learning in various areas. Today, we have a representative from Worcester College of Technology here with us, Peter Kilcoyne, who's been doing a lot of partnership enhancing for us. And I'm glad to say that we also have a beneficiary for that e-learning here. The director of Nigeria Teachers Institute, Dr. Laban, is right here. And we have seen them benefit from our collaboration. So it's not just pieces, as we have from our chair today. We have to go the extra mile. And what we're saying is this, women, adult learners, rural students, whether they are already in service or out of service, are definitely having access to affordable technology because of this partnership. 
And these are only a few of the 200,000 who have been reached. Recently, we have gone a step further and listened to what people need. And they've told us, help us more to build our capacity. And we are enhancing training partnerships in areas of e-learning, social media, uh, coding, which is developing local solution softwares, and above all, research. We've got research support for open access publishing from Biomed Central UK, which runs a regional African conference. And we'll continue to do more because of the support that you continuously give us. And that's unlocking access from its shell. That's the, the Biomed Central logo. Module for universities, a small picture, not just on a bus, but we actually get online and do get support for e-learning across Africa. We were told to admit where we cannot do. And these are some of the areas. Research, including <coughs> development projects that have reached an end of life. Every time we train a local access person, they get a better job. And therefore, we have to train again. And cost of connectivity because the numbers on the ground are not sufficient enough for us to get the, the bandwidth required for us to have as many people connected as possible. And finally, the management of electronic waste, which today we are saying every country needs to put legislation in place so that it can handle the e-waste that it and then relates from development. Together with the partnership that you give us, I do know that we shall continue to make sustainable ICT on the ground. We continue to help people to recognize and use the information that they receive for development purposes. With your support, local and internationally, we will continue to coordinate efforts to make sure that affordable ICT is on the ground. And above all, we build the capacity and the technical support so that these tools can be used now. Help us to continue this mission to accelerate and achieve this development, to research and to disseminate both on social media and open access, like I hope you're tweeting on what we are doing today, our past lessons and our best practices, because we need to continue using information and communication technology now for the future. Thank you very much. Um, hi, Gladys. Uh, Faisal Chowdhury from the Royal Household. I just wanted to ask, what um, particular things would you say is are you most in need of? I know you mentioned laptops. Um, is there any other, is it mainly spares, cabling, PCs? Wow, it's like asking me to choose everything I need to go. <laughs> we need everything. But, uh, the biggest challenge is for the beneficiary to choose what they can make use of immediately. So our biggest challenge right now is to advocate more for people to understand what ICT is all about and what ICT for development can do for them. We have a lot of billboards, I don't know if you look at any country as you drive in from the airport, talking about the latest technology, but I always ask myself, is that what they really need, the latest technology, or is there a technology that is affordable at their level that they can make immediate use of now? The second thing we need is collaboration, because there is something you have which is of access to you that is needed by somebody else, and computer then becomes the intermediary. So don't throw away what you have because you're not sure what you can use it for. Give it to us and we'll find a good home for it and make sure that it's sustainable. But all the least you added, give us plus money. <laughs> Gift date as well. Yes. Thank date. you for that. Uh, do we have another question? Anyone? Uh, we have one um, right in the front here, in the middle. Um, hello. At Dream Rescue from the Reading Trust, we send people sending computers out to Tanzania and they're delighted to have them. Um, could you help us on e-learning? The English in Tanzania is very bad and we're looking at providing e-learning packages for English language, teaching it as a foreign language. 
can you point us in the direction as where we get those from? Because you talked about university for e-learning, but not secondary school level. And we have a situation where both teachers and students are um, struggling to English. Uh, I think it's uh, just because we started at the university levels and tertiary institutions doesn't mean we cannot go to schools. I think Peter will agree with me on that. It's basically the entry level where people understand that they need this technology. So the what we teach is not English, but we teach them how to make that content e-learning. So the teachers will then make their content go online. But because of collaborations, and I have very many university partners here, locally and regionally, who would then work together to get the solution that you need, especially Tanzania is just next door to me. So we'll definitely get to, to, to see what we can do. We might not have all the answers, I'll admit, but we can seek the person to do it. 